Thanks for being with us tonight. Experts in corporate governance are impressing on government the need to strengthen confidence in public institutions by employing effective corporate governance structures. This follows recent dismissals of CEOs of some public institutions by the president, chief executive of the Corporate Governance Institute, Simon Osborne, has been speaking to Joy Business on this development. He spoke during the launch of the Ghana branch of the institute. There's more in this report. It is very imperative for governments to consider citing reasons for the dismissal of chief executives of some public institutions if corporate governance is anything to go by. That's according to the chief executive of the Governance Institute, Simone Osborne, who says the lack of a corporate governance structure in public institutions has the potential of resulting in more dismissals in the future. He was speaking to Joy Business at the launch of the Ghana branch of the Governance Institute in Accra. What value? they're giving back and how that value enhances the value of the organization and its relevance to the society in which it operates. All right. It starts with purpose, goes to the values, both of which have to be set by the board and I'm not sure all organizations do that and I'm sure in Ghana it's the same situation as it is in the UK. Speaking about Ghana, you know recently we've had several of the chief executives at top levels of public institutions sacked. I mean, from your intellectual perspective, do you think this could have any impact on social, uh, that's uh, corporate uh, governance structures in the country? Could there be any impact? It, it, it certainly could. I mean, as, uh, working on the assumption that there was a legitimate reason for sacking those chief executives, it's not just a case of replacing the chief executive, it's getting to the root cause of the problems that gave rise to each of those dismissals. And that's something the board has to look into. Um, they can't just be content with replacing a person, an individual. There's probably an evidence of a deeper seated problem. And that, need, and that comes back to the board's responsibility for culture. You know, what are the forces that influence the, and drivers that influence the way that that organization operates? Meanwhile, head of outreach at the Governance Institute, Theresa Miney, has been sharing with Joy Business how a Ghana branch of the Institute would impact good governance and board evaluation. Um, we will form proper committees and have a proper constitution there, and that branch will be here in Ghana to help and support all the local members and students and all the new uh, graduates that are going to come through the program. Why Ghana? Um, it's a growing market here. There's um, there's a, a business. There's a lot of business uh, businesses here, um, and governance we feel is very forefront of the agenda here in Ghana. Um, so we think it's a perfect opportunity for us to expand um, ICSA and, our, and and get our members and students known out there for for their skill sets in governance. The call for good corporate governance is based on basic advantages it brings, including the enhancement of investor trust trust, protection of minority shareholders and the encouragement of better decision making and improved relations with workers, creditors and stakeholders. Societe General Ghana has hinted of plans to go into financial consolidation as part of its growth strategy. The bank, however, maintains it has already made progress in meeting the new capital requirement of 400 million cities by September this year. All banks in the country are expected to meet the new capital level by December or risk losing their licenses, the outgoing managing director, Sion Yo, uh, was speaking after a business cocktail organized by his outfit to officially welcome Hakim Rizani as new managing director of the bank. This Makawusa reports. How I respect you. You know how I admire the tremendous jobs that you have done during these numerous years in Societe Generale. The outgoing SG Ghana boss, Mr. Sion Le Yeo, says he shares in government's vision of making the private sector engine of growth. He said the private sector needs financing from strong banks, hence the need for banks to increase their financial capacity. And to get financing, we need strong banks. And if we, if we want to, find, to, to enter into, uh, let's say, uh, very big projects, uh, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of um, manufacturing, they need big financing. He has gained from his board at the group level to be part of a consolidation 
should there be any opportunity that we deem uh, good for us. So clearly, uh, not only we will meet the minimum capital required on our own, but also we are ready to be an actor, a player of the consolidation should we have any significant uh, um, opportunity. On his part, head of SG Africa, Alexander Maymat, recalled that SG Paris and SG Ghana have in the past decade financed quite a number of projects in the various sectors of the economy. You know, it's always easy for the head of Africa to work, to experience Africa, rather than to experience the difficulties of the head office in Paris. We have fostered a relationship between our African bankers and our European bankers. We have put in place a very strong cooperation between SG China and SG Africa. And we will continue developing relationships and financial products to facilitate exchanges of trade and financial flows between the different parts of the continent. The purpose of the business cocktail was to bid Mr. Yu farewell and also welcome the new managing director, Hakim Uzani. Speaking to Joy Business after the event, Mr. Uzani says client's satisfaction would be his focus as he assumes the new role. All the solutions we have to bring have to be solutions to respond to these needs. We don't innovate just for innovate. We innovate to respond to real, real needs of our customers. And all my job is to coordinate this job, to uh, motivate my teams, to, be, uh, to listen to uh, the needs of our, our clients, and to use all the resources and the tools we have to respond uh, by the right way to these needs. And I think that we will, we will success on this. The former SG Ghana boss, Sion Le Yo, has been appointed as head of SG Eastern and Central Africa. Bismarck Aousa, Joy Business. Well, in the quest to deepen financial inclusion and also expand customer base, banks are now adopting new innovations like banking apps to rake in more clients by the power of technology. But are these apps really catching up with the public? Charles Aite has been finding out. I have specific ones that I go into, especially the branch locator and then the ATM locator as well. Wow. So, uh, on a scale of uh, 10 to 20, right. 20 being the highest, how often do you use this app? I would say maybe up to 13. 13. That's going to be like a fail. You, you don't often yeah. use the application. What about you, Chrissy? Do you have this app? You, you say you have the app, but do you often use this app? Okay, well, um, not often, not not so often, but I would say 15, yeah, okay. over 20, yeah, um, because I think one thing about the app is that you're able to transact, you do all your transactions on the app, and just like Sinclair said, um, ATM locator and then branch locator, which is very important. In every economy, so we have early adopters and laggards, right? And I think that for the kind of sector this is in, it being in the finance sector, it's quite risky to jump into any technology that comes on board, right? And so I think it's the nature of the industry more than um, anything else. And so I think it would take some time, but I honestly believe that it's um, an important step to making the economy better, yeah, because it makes everything much easier and convenient. All right. People, banks, other banks are moving into that sector, the mobile app sector, because other, you know, their competitors are doing the same. I think it's one thing they should look at. And then the other side is, um, you know, now banks are using USSD codes. I mean, that makes it very easy for those who don't have smartphones to actually interact with the bank. So, and then I think one thing banks should, should be doing is, you know, investing into security. Because, I mean, with the risk of somebody losing money just by transaction, you know, when it comes to technology, anytime you mention technology in Ghana, it's a problem. Everybody, you know, is thinking about my money and, you know, spam and all of that. So they should invest into security, you know, cyber security, trying to, um, you know, protect people's money, you know, when it comes to you. All right. What about you, uh, Carol? The best ways that banks could adopt to deepen financial inclusion through technology? 
Um, well, if you say deepen, then I think that we should be looking at the grassroots as well because um, when it comes to financial inclusion, we have to be thinking about those who don't actually have access to it, not exactly those who already do. And so um, looking, at, looking at it from that perspective, I think that they can be really roping in the mobile money technology, right? Because I, I, um, they, they, there's, I think there's a technology that's coming up, the mobile money ATM, yeah, whereby people can just go and um, transact. I think it's good because um, not everybody has a cell phone, a smartphone to be, uh, for that matter. And not everybody really understands how to use the smartphone. So to deepen financial inclusion and to touch the grassroots and make impact, then it has to be something that anybody can easily understand and interact with, yet um, securing their money in such a way that it's not going wow, away. That's yeah. interesting. Let me end with you, Sinclair. Right. The best ways by which they could deepen financial inclusion through technology. Uh, I think uh, it's not everyone that holds a smartphone to have an app installed. Uh, I believe for the majority of the economy that are still in the informal sector, I mean, uh, some people are not even literate to even install, have an email address to sign up and all that. So if they have a platform that runs on USSD, uh, more like a short uh, messaging uh, application, I think it's something that is going to help. I mean, anyone who has a mobile money account knows how to maybe send money, all right? So then they can just input some short codes and then maybe see their bank balances. They can maybe insert maybe another code to see where the branches are. So the same thing that you have on the app can be transferred into an USSD platform, which is much easier. So those two platforms can be made available. And I think it can help people, you know, be, you know, patronizing of the features. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Sinclair, Kwesi, and Carol for those excellent, excellent submissions related to the issues of banking apps here in Ghana. So we shall be expanding this argument as time goes on, especially when so many Ghanaians are yet to catch up with this whole craze of the banking apps in our financial sector. We shall be having more answers to the issues of financial inclusion and whether or not the banking sector is actually taking the right strategy to attract more prospective clients into its space. I'm Charles Aite for Joy Business. You're watching Business Live. Now, June 27 will be marked as the International Day for Micro, Small and Medium Scale Enterprises. Ahead of the day, Joy Business has been engaging some entrepreneurs and as usual, the persistent challenge of access to funding came to the fore. Karen Dodu reports. Z has been running her pork business for the past six months. Although she has plans to upgrade her business, she intends to do so by plowing back the profits she makes from her business. I once tried applying for a loan, but a friend advised me that once I go for a loan, I will not be able to track my profits. I also didn't want to get involved with the police in case I'm unable to pay. Auntie Lizzie is not alone. Among entrepreneurs and operators of small and medium scale enterprises, the issue of access to credit for expansion remains the bane of their businesses. As a result, such businesses rely mainly on plowed back profits. The major reason for their predicaments being their inability to pay back loans. I started this business with my own money. I might or might not be able to repay the loan. Since I am not sure, I will just grow my business with my profit. Joy Business also gathered that most traders lament of inadequate financing to support their business. According to the United Nations, these enterprises can in fact become the engines that sustain growth for long-term development in developing countries like Ghana. Recognizing the importance of micro, small and medium-sized enterprises in achieving the new global development goals, 
the United Nations General Assembly has designated 27th June as International Day for those actors. According to the United Nations, 95% of enterprises worldwide are micro, small and medium and they account for 60% of employment in the private sector. However, research has shown that one of their major problems is access to funding and therefore how do we solve the surmounting challenge? Reporting for Joy Business, Karen Dodu. In other news tonight, Pomacido Ghana, producers of Cowbell Milk Powder, um, have unveiled a new addition that's Cowbell Gold to their wide range of products. As part of their media tour, the group bought the new brand, which was launched in April this year, to the premises of uh, Multimedia Group Limited this morning. Fozia to Adam has been engaging the events and PR manager of Pomacido Ghana, Gideon Kodo, on the new product and our reports. Cowbell has a new product in town called the Cowbell Gold. It's a mixture of chocolate, milk, malt and sugar. I have the public relations manager of Cowbell, Mr. Gideon, to tell me more about the product penetration here in Ghana. Hi Gideon. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fine. What is happening here? Tell me. So as you can tell, we really want to give an amazing experience to the listeners and viewers of multimedia. Uh, with the newest product from uh, Promastador Ghana Limited, which is the, we are the producers of Cowbell, and our new product is Cowbell Gold. I want to give that rich experience and that amazing product uh, to, 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 your, to your listeners and your viewers as well. Okay, um, how different is this product from the other products of Cowbell? So, Cowbell Gold is a four in one amazing, fantastic, crispy, uh, uh, fortified choco milk drink. Uh, it's made from the finest Ghanaian cocoa. It has malt, it has sugar. I mean, it's, it has uh, that perfect amount of, of milk and all, has all the nutritional relevance that you would need a, a, a choco milk drink to have. And we really want to introduce it to, uh, I mean, we want the Ghanaian market to have uh, a feel of uh, this product. And that's why we're here today, starting with uh, multimedia. Some people who had a taste of the new Carbell Gold shared the experience of the product. I think it tastes good. And um, I will encourage everybody who is um, watching Joy News, listening to Adum Joy FM now to come to multimedia premises and enjoy uh, Carbell with us. Oh, it's really, really nice. It's very tasty. So I recommend it to everyone out there. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Rana Motors and Metal Engineering Company, authorized distributors of Kia vehicles in Ghana, have lauded government for taking steps to reduce port inspection agencies. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya recently announced the scale down of the agencies from 16 to 3 effective next month. This is meant to enhance the digitalization agenda on the robustness of the technology by the state for pump port uh, delivery system. Chief Operating Officer of Rana Motors, Kasem um, Odemat, says it is a good step to facilitate faster clearing of goods. He spoke to Joy Business at the opening of the new Rana Motors facility at Asafo near the VIP bus terminal in Kumase. Prince of Pia has details in the following report. The initiative announced by Vice President Dr. Baumia is to enhance the digitization agenda on the robustness of the technology by the state for prompt port delivery system. Chief Operations Officer of Rana Motors, Kasim Odaimat, says it is a good step to facilitate the clearing of goods. Of course it's a good step because, uh, you know, the... You mean the paperless system that they are putting in place, this will facilitate the business and like the clearing of the goods to be faster. Of course, we, uh, we, we have welcomed this, uh, you know, this step that the government is trying to put and we are also constantly s sitting as you know, industry uh, leaders from different companies. We are inst constantly uh, calling to sit with the government to even discuss further on how we can improve things for the economy because what we believe in that when the economy is doing better and when uh, the, uh, the, the economy starts moving more, it will be good for the nation and to be good, good to, for all of us as the people of Ghana. 
He spoke to Love Business at the opening of the new facility by Rana Motors at Asafo in Kumase. The office is offering a 15% special discount for some of its cars for residents of Kumase. Rana Motors is currently a distributor of 12 models out of the Kia range. It has successfully acquired the dealership and distribution of other vehicle brands like Ford Trucks, Hyundai Trucks and Buses. Mr. Odaimat says it is important for businesses to be closer to the market with their products. Actually for us, we've been, we've been uh, in Kumasi for so many years in the Swami area, uh, Swami magazine, but we, we believe that the center of Kumasi in this, is in this area, so that's why we said it is very important for us to, to, to have something in this part of Kumasi so we can serve better the people of Kumasi. So we decided to uh, renovate this facility and start our business here. Uh, for us, uh, we, we are striving to satisfy our customers more and more. So that, that means you have to have more branches and you have to be uh, available next to your customer, wherever he is in the, uh, in, in the country. So We want to bring you our interview of the day next. And Finance Minister Ken Oferiata has given a strong indication he would be introducing new taxes during the media budget review. The Finance Ministry over the past months has hinted of the need to review tax measures to make them more responsive to current trends. It has also argued that any review should help address challenges with revenue mobilization. But speaking to journalists after a meeting in Accra, Finance Minister Ken Ofriata said all options are still on the table in terms of reviewing the revenue strategies. Going in from what I just said, in terms of what government has given, and a real sense of um, uh, meeting our social contract obligation with the citizen, is now to, to open up the books and say, okay, where do we want to go? What do we need to pay for? And therefore, how do we reframe? Uh, our tax system or means of collecting revenue so we go ahead. So I don't really want to look at it as a, an imposition from me, but in we sitting down and saying, okay, where are we going and what should we do? And that in a, in a stronger, socially stable environment is how business thrives. Uh, so me, it's a very holistic thing. It's not me against you. It's me saying, coming back, seeing a sense of state coercion and saying, let me take this off to create economic freedom for us to be able to breathe, get the economy stable. And then we all realign and say, okay, how do we go forward? And I'll put that question really um, to you as opposed to, to me. Yeah. I would like to do that because if I were to ask all of you whether you filed your taxes on April 30th, likely it is no. And the question is, why is it no? You know, because I might have gotten maybe another thousand CDs from you, a thousand CDs from that person. And, 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 and where are we as a nation going if a whole bunch of people are not paying taxes? In Rwanda, um, the average um, could and could um, inform our person has to pay taxes because there's an app on your on your phone and uh, we can track you and um, it's very simple and there are tax agents in every every city uh, or every village and everybody files and suddenly you know we move from 16% um, revenue to GDP um, to 26% and then we can take care of the social services And that will be it for tonight's edition of Business Live. More news on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business. you find the latest stories there. Of course, uh, we are monitoring the OPEC meeting uh, that is taking place. OPEC to raise oil production from July. You want to read more on that plus other stories making headlines. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week.